so today I'm going to talk about Grand Challenge 1.1, which, which is about environmental performance variation, and giving you some insights from the research the last couple of years, actually. So first of all, uh, the observed environmental performance variation. So um, what is the issue? Um, some of you have seen this picture before, but it's quite strange because two factories look exactly the same. They use the same technology and they work, or um, it looks like they work on the uh, similar circumstances. But in fact, we can see that uh, there's performance variation or environmental performance variation between two quite similar factories. So uh, what we did was uh, we spoke to various companies across different sectors to see uh, how much the variation can be between two similar factories which produce products under similar cir uh, circumstances. And I sort of anonymized these uh, companies because it's quite embarrassing to talk about this and actually say like, look, uh, this uh, factory uses five times more energy than that factory and we're producing, for instance, cars or uh, something else. And it's uh, the same company even, so it's quite shocking. Um, we published some of these results as well uh, at, um, at a conference, but also in uh, journal papers. Um, so it, yeah, that's the way sort of to address this issue and show that it's not only about making the long-term big changes, but also addressing the seemingly easy, easy problems of what happens within factory boundaries. So what are the types of uh, performance variation that we observed? We could even see that factory managers talked about uh, the embarrassment of what happens between shifts and that between shifts people just don't learn from each other. So for instance, one factory manager told me, well, I could, uh, could tell like if this shift was on that uh, my performance would be a lot worse. So he could even pinpoint the people uh, that were the worst performing ones within one factory boundary. Uh, but also uh, we could see that you can benchmark a factory against itself uh, you could look at production sites within the same company, um, uh, within the same sector, but there's also a lot of learning to do across sectors. And uh, like one of our students, uh, Lampos Litos, observed, there's also interesting learning to make between processes and technologies, because a lot of technologies uh, that are used in factories are the same, so you can also learn between the variations of these specific technologies, such as heating and ventilation syst systems. So what we did was a little study on uh, performance management and metrics. Uh, that's what we did last year. And we sort of wanted to learn whether putting metrics in place would really make, uh, make a big uh, change and whether it would change the behavior of how people uh, uh, perform in factories. But we, what we found is that there's a big difference between uh, measurement and management. So besides having the measurement systems in place, it seems equally important to have training, um, uh, have the sort of governance systems in place where you have a, su a sustainability champion and that champion teaches another person how to do it. And that, that sort of stuff seems to be almost equally important uh, to the measure measurement systems. So what we found is some speci uh, specific um, uh, recommendations. So first of all, uh, we find small companies which have a clear sustainability vision and they're very clear on, uh, they for, uh, for instance, have a handbook or they really do very good recruitment. And based on that, they can already make changes within a very small uh, organization. Um, so governance systems are also very important. So if you have, uh, for instance, uh, as a CEO, you might have uh, uh, a sort of uh, incentive scheme that you sort of put in place and you make sure that it sort of trickles down to the rest of the business as well. And also you need to be open about your reporting and in your reporting also perhaps talk about failures because uh, people sort of forget that there are failures and that other people can learn about failures. And that sort of counts with your interactions with suppliers and customers as well. It's not only about sharing what went well but also learning from what didn't go well. So now the very important in-depth uh, work that all clever PhD students are doing. So um, we have uh, two core PhDs as part of the project and we have one uh, also very important PhD uh, student who is associated with, it, uh, with our project. So we'll explain a bit about what they're doing. But they 
can sort of correct me later. <laughs> and you can find them later because I will show the pictures so you can easily find them uh, after, the, after the presentation. So first of all, it's Simon Roberts. So he's based at Cranfield and he's um, uh, been involved in an earlier project, which is called Therm and Steve has been um, doing the project in from Cranfield already. So from uh, the Therm project, it was a wide range of sustainable manufacturing practices, uh, building on literature and on practice. And he is building on this uh, list of or this large library of sustainable manufacturing practices. And he's now looking into the ways of how these can be best used in companies. So uh, he's looking at uh, sort of the social and technical factors that make these practices uh, yeah, successful in companies. So being academics, we have to create nice pictures. So you might be familiar with the fee uh, four Ps of marketing, but uh, Simon created the nine Ps of sustainable manufacturing. Um, so yes, at least the academic contribution is uh, definitely there. But he's really gonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he's also doing something very practical, as you can see here. This is uh, the functional design of a website. So uh, we're working with a company called Signals, and. Uh, this is a very complicated picture that we sort of gave to Signals and said, okay, we want to create a database that works where people can easily find practices, start to use the practices, and it needs to be almost as good as Wikipedia, that if you want to find something, you immediately find what you need. So this is a very complicated functional design we gave uh, Signals, and now they sort of have to build the website around this. So his future research um, has, yeah, takes these practices further and he wants to describe them in further detail. And although he's done some very interesting case study projects already with specific companies and identified uh, options that save money and also uh, carbon emissions and energy uh, through only two week, uh, two, a two week long master project. So it's really proving that the practices work well. He really wants to uh, take that a step further. And so if you're interested in working uh, on this uh, particular area, I uh, recommend you to contact Simon or speak to him later as well. Then there's Lampros Litos. So he's based in Cambridge. Uh, so he has done his first year of the PhD and uh, worked hard on his uh, first year report. But um, uh, the first year of a PhD is very, uh, uh, a very scary phase where you just have to absorb a lot of information. Um, but he comes from a manufacturing background, so he's really interested in taking um, very practical issues forward, like benchmarking, like how uh, can you best do ma benchmarking? What, how can it be effective? So um, and he's uh, interviewing uh, practitioners as well, following what they do, what works well, what doesn't work well. So he's really combining action research and um, uh, action research and interviews uh, to sort of develop better ways of benchmarking. So this is a, a complicated academic uh, picture <laughs> where he sort of tries to combine uh, the findings that he has from the practice and uh, from practice and interviews. So future uh, work, um, one of the other things he's developing, for instance, is a, a framework that sort of shows where the starting point is of, of companies that aren't so effective yet and what the end point is. So he's sort of developing different steps in the process, like a maturity model of how to get there. And he's also uh, continuing the work on benchmarking. So you can contact him on his email address over there. And this is the associated PhD student, um, Anand, who is based in uh, Cranfield. And he's doing some very clever work on factory modeling. So if you like uh, uh, pretty design, you can go outside and you see this nicely developed uh, factory, an actual uh, model of a factory. Um, he did the work by hand, so, so you can see his uh, technical skills as well. So you can have a look at the factory, mini factory outside. But his work is mainly based uh, mainly on um, the level of depth of uh, information you need to have in order to make good decisions in factories. So uh, he has de developed some conceptual and actual models uh, around this. 
So to have a bit of an idea, um, his work focuses on the different layers of factories. So first of all, you have the production system, but you also have the utility. So many companies nowadays think, okay, if we just buy clean energy uh, off the grid, then it's solved. But what he's doing is creating a far more integrated uh, picture, which links the product systems to the utility systems to the architecture, because he's also an architect by training. So that's uh, what he brings in there as well. So he's comparing model depth versus a, a breadth and how much information you actually need to make sensible decisions. So some pretty modeling pictures that he develops as a result of his uh, work. So you can see it outside as well, but just to show you some of the um, work he's um, been doing. So his future research is uh, to do more simulations based on, uh, yeah, based on the level of depth of, of the data, and you can also speak to him uh, later after, uh, after the presentation. And now um, we have a new, uh, relatively new colleague for a couple of months, <laughs> and uh, she's been really taking on um, the development of a website. So it's Melanie Despais. Oh, she's over there, and she's great at designing uh, things which look very colorful and, and nice. So she, what we want to do as part of the uh, of the project is develop a sort of a toolkit, like a one-stop shop where people can go and find information on. Uh, environmental performance variation, what it is, how you can find solutions. And it's sort of, um, yeah, this is sort of the alpha version of it. And you can also access it on the computer upstairs near where Anand is. So you can have a look and click on the different pages already and see whether you think it's, it's a useful way of presenting information. And to give you a bit of uh, insights on what, what is on the website. So, for instance, one area is the tactics. So that's also building very much on the film project and making that um, uh, data available, for instance, what the waste hierarchy is and how companies should deal with concepts such as the waste hierarchy. So we're trying to explain that through the website. And another area uh, is uh, Sankey diagrams, which is, uh, has become more popular again, although it was already developed in the sort of the 60s, but we're trying to sort of revive that area and show what Sankey models can do and show and how it can show you what to do uh, and um, how to improve your environmental performance to see by seeing where the waste streams are. So, uh, so the, uh, going to the conclusions, we actually found that uh, uh, environmental performance variation continues uh, to persist in well, seemingly well-run companies, so companies we all basically know. And although it's difficult to replicate successes, we've seen uh, areas where it's happening and we're taking these experiences forward in uh, the tools that we develop. So we're not trying to develop yet another tool that is not going to work, but we're really going to take this social science angle as well and not only the engineering pro approach, but really make a, a, make a sort of a more interdisciplinary way of developing tools. So, uh, yeah, I showed you some of the tools, so I would recommend you to meet up with the students afterwards as well. And um, we would love to engage you in the further development of tools and uh, the further agenda of the projects. So, some pictures of everyone so <laughs> and the future agenda. And questions? Well, I think we're taking questions at the end, right? We are. Thank uh, you go to the most important place. <laughs>